On June 6, 1944, the, um, the Allies, which is tomorrow, actually, fun fact, so that's on a Tuesday. And also, what a coincidence, uh, it's the same day when it actually happened. The invasion of Normandy happened on a Tuesday, so I'm just going to point that out. So, anyway, on June 6, 1944, the Allies invade Western Europe, and it's the largest amphibious attack in in history. But there's even a larger one in the Pacific Theater, but that's, a video, that's just something else you can look up on your own time. Um, so what's happening right now is the uh, the operation. Uh, it was called Operation Overlord, but most people these days call it D-Day. Uh, involved about one one hundred and fifty six thousand American, British, Canadian forces, and also the Free French and many other units. And they evaded the um, that landed on the five beaches along the fifty mile stretch of heavily fortified coast uh, on Normandy. So. Um, uh, so basically what that means is in Normandy there was like these big, big bunkers, there was lots of fortifications the, uh, these troops had to face. So the five beaches was Utah, um, and G Omaha, Gold, June, and Sword Beach. Uh, so Utah and Omaha, that would be the Americans that would be landing on. Gold, Juno, and Sword would be, would be where the British and Canadian troops would be landing. Utah was pretty easy to uh, capture because uh, you know what's funny they landed in the wrong area on Utah but uh, they just the the commander at the time just said you know what let's just keep pushing and let's take an enemy by surprise so they basically just kind of uh, kind of surrounded the, the the bunkers where they're supposed to land on and quickly captured him Omaha was really bloody it took them I think it took the Americans most of the day like all day trying to take those bunkers because the the bunkers were really fortified the artillery strike the naval strike that the uh, the commanders tried to sh sh um, launch before the uh, the landing craft crafts got to the beach, they kind of missed their shots, so it kind of landed all over the place. And then they also tried to call in a bomb airstrike too uh, before the invasion started. Uh, that that kind of went off by a mile, so they kind of the bombs landed like further east, like west, like not even on the beach, so that made things worse. So. Those those American troops were stuck in the beach, but they managed to finally get off those beaches and take the take the land, take Omaha. But it was a very high price. There was a lot more American casualties and German casualties that day. Um, Brit uh, Gold, Juno, and Sword were pretty easy, except I think it was Juno. Yeah, Juno. Um, that beach was also like kind of. It wasn't like it wasn't like Omaha where it was really bloody, but it was really bad, and the Germans gave them a tough fight. And, but the British managed to get out th that beach, and the French too. So they got out those beaches. So after that, the Germans were Adolf Hitler um, still commanding. Um, he thought that the invasion of Normandy was all just a false rumor. It was like he, th and when he saw that, he thought it was just like it's just a fake attack. The, the Allies are going to land this in this area. That area was called Pal Palace de, de Calais, which is basically it was this um, this tiny short r r region, and this region was really close to Germany, and so Hitler mainly focused on fortifying that area, in particular, but he didn't really focus on fortifying the other side of the uh, the fortifications. It was called the F uh, Fortress of Europe. And it, it basically was a stretch of fortifications such as bunkers, mines, anti-tank anti -tank traps, and etc. And so he basically built all that stuff. And he also kept the tank divisions stuck up there. So those tank divisions, if they didn't, if they, if Hitler known about the invasion of Normandy, he would have sent those tanks immediately. But I guess he didn't want to, he, he didn't really care. And he didn't believe in the invasion. He just thought it was all fake. So as the Allies are pushing their way through Normandy, um, well, actually, let's backtrack a little bit. That um, today, June fifth, when I, as I'm recording this um, tonight, um, the the airborne U, the airborne troops that involved the U.S. Uh, U.S. Airborne, uh, such as the hundred uh, first Airborne, the eighty second Airborne, the British Airborne divisions, and also there's also these U, uh, the commandos. Uh, so that's the U.S. versions of the the SAS. They actually did exist back then, just saying, the British SAS. So they involved them. So the their the 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 paratroopers goals, the Americans goals was just try to capture key strategic areas. Um so they can hold them for the Allies when they get there. But what happened was 
when they got there, their pilots, they weren't really trained. So, so really that messed things up. And so the Allies, uh, the paratroopers, when they jumped out of the planes, they kind of landed all over the place. And also to make things worse, the Germans, um, their commander, Erwin Rommel, he kind of knew that the, uh, if there was an airborne invasion, that fields would be a really obvious t uh, place where they would land. So he basically flooded the fields and then like set like just booby traps and all that stuff all over the countryside. So if you're a paratrooper, the, f the fields were flooded, you would drown. Or if you landed on those narrow roads, you might get captured and just get shot if you're stuck in a tree. But some paratroopers did land on the ground safely, but but others got lost, and so they got like stuck there, and they had to find their way back with the troops. So some divisions got like lost, and they had a group together, like even though they were from different divisions or companies. So it made things really confusing, and it just made things worse. But meanwhile, the British commander and the British paratroopers managed to take this key bridge that was leading to the Khan, which was this major supply city, and it was allowing the it could allow the the Allied British troops, none the Allied troops, to go to Paris as fast as they can. So they were holding that bridge, which was really valuable. So they did hold it for most of the day. Meanwhile, the airborne, the U.S. airborne divisions. I'm just going to combine them together because it was kind of confusing. Uh, so they worked. They worked together. They took their key objectives and they managed to held on for that day and so when on Ju when June 6 happened they still held their objectives and the allied the the naval troops got there and helped them out so it took like so the fighting was very intense afterwards going off the beaches so then some so when they got there off the beaches there was this thing called hedgerows uh, these are basically these massive you know like those bushes but uh, you see at your garden or something like that but just imagine those, but really big, and then there's like a narrow trench in the below it. That's what that's what the fighting was. So it was really long and tedious. The Germans knew their their terrain because they kind of had that area for like four years now at that time. So basically, it was they 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 gave the Allied troops a tough time, but they did break out. The Americans came up with this idea called the Rhino Tanks, which is basically sticking a metal spear on the tank and then just like, sh uh, and then just going through the bushes with the American troops behind it. And then uh, the British troops didn't, t when they landed on the beaches, they did not take their key objective, which was taking Khan. So that allowed the Germans to build up their defenses around that city. And it took them, I believe, till like end of July that, that they got um, Khan. Meanwhile, the Americans were still breaking out. They d so then the Americans were pushing to Cherbourg, which was a key like port that would allow them to get their supplies and make and work and make things better because their supplies right now were kind of it was just not working. It wasn't flowing. There was like a lot of traffic jams and stuff like that. So they had to take that. So once they took Cherbourg, uh, the Germans blew that up. So that it wasn't really a good idea. So they had to repair that. It wasn't it didn't work till like mid July and stuff like that. It didn't work till mid July. <laughs> so then once the allied troops got out of like the hedge roads and they actually wait hang on um so then uh i think it was like early uh, mid early yeah early july the ally the allied forces were stuck so it was like going to be almost Probably like trench warfare it, it, no one wanted, wanted that so the american troops right tried to launch this operation yeah, sure. Uh, Operation Cobra was just basically taking a bunch of bombers and air force and mm -hmm. just like trying to bomb these, uh, trying to bomb the front line and allow the air, the, Amer the troops to push up. As you can see, the bombers didn't cooperate with the troops on the ground, and so it made things, uh, let's just say, it made things worse. So, like, because sometimes the bombs would actually I hit their the troops, kill. not the enemy, but it's still, oh, so whoa, the Operation I need to make, this I but it didn't really I need a medic. Medic, It took medic. the Allies oh, to died. August to finally get out of uh, out of the headroads and into Paris. They finally liberated Holy Paris, shit. And, but the war is not over yet. The war ended in 1945, so that was another year later, and that's it. But anyway, that's that the history of D-Day for you guys. I hope you guys team. liked today's Holy video. Shoot. Leave you a like if you did. Subscribe to see more. Let me know if you guys want more, any more history right videos or if you just are interested in this. As always, I hope you guys have an awesome day, and 